What's going on, guys? Um, this is going to be a bit of a weird video for me, but because it's like my first time trying to do something like this. And so, anyway, here goes. Um, a lot of people keep asking me about uh, 3D printing questions and various other things like that while I'm live streaming and doing various other things and whatnot. And they keep asking me, you know, it's like, you know, how can you print things like, you know, this really cool uh, uh, Nurgle standing for a demon prince from Dark Gods. Or this one, which I actually paid a company to print because for some reason my printer was having a hard time printing it. Uh, again, from Dark Gods. Um, I do like Dark Gods stuff. Uh, they're amazing sculptors. Um, all the way down to some alternate... Um, to some alternate Imperial Guardsmen for cultists that I'm... Well, renegades that I'm doing. I'm doing a renegade Imperial Guard chapter. Um, still going to use the Imperial Guard Codex. The only difference is, is they're going to be renegade. Uh, so lots of spikes, skulls, things of that nature. But they're still going to be, um, sorry, Astra Militarum, as they've got to be called now, instead of Imperial Guard. But lately, one of the big questions that came up was during my live stream of printing this guy. This is my Owen Rommel burst. Now, you notice that there is some Milliput on it, simply because um, I only found out after this was printed that I have some dead pixels on my 3D printer screen. So I, I'm... I'm going to be ordering me a new screen and everything else for my Voxlab Polaris. I'm also going to be picking me up a used, uh, uh, I think it's a, a, a Igloo Satin. Um, let me double check. It's on my Amazon orders real quick. Um, not my Alexa shopping list. Um, yeah, so I can get another Proxima 6.0 or I can get the Igloo Mars 3. Oh no, Mars 3 is out of stock. So the Mars 2 Pro uh, is in stock. So uh, it looks like I'm going to be getting a, a an actual Igloo uh, 3D printer as well as my Voxlab. Now I do like Voxlab. They are a cool printer. Um, now, again, this original uh, uh, burst was actually this size. Okay. Uh, and I did hollow this one out, hence that's why it's got a whole bunch of holes in it and a whole bunch of, again, milliput on there to fill up the holes. But at the same time, I thought, let's scale it up. That way I can practice painting face shadows um, and various, uh, and work on, you know, trying various other details. And so I've got, uh, like I said, you can see a big size difference. So, and this one's solid. This one is, you know, th these aren't holes. This is where it's connected to the, the print bed. Um, so this is a solid model, and this is a, a hollow one. So I've got those to paint on stream. Now, again, one of the questions I got asked was, what is the biggest model that you can print on my uh, on, a, on a 3D printer the size of the Voxlab Proxima? Um, the Proxima's bed is 13 centimeters in length by 7.8 centimeters in width by 15.5 centimeters in height. So it's quite a tall... Um, printer but it but it's quite narrow so a lot of your prints you're going to have to orientate them in different angles to get them to fit on the bed i do have some models that are just too big um and i'm in the process of, of splitting of, of cutting the models up using various other software now this is a software i use to fix any issues with my 3d prints now one of the things that i've been trying to print off for myself now this is just for my personal collection i am not doing this in any way to stab at gw or anything is i'm 3d printing my own chaos knight um simply because the chaos knight i want i can't get um whether it be the fact that well gw hasn't made it yet or the fact that the upgrade kit is always sells out in forge world so I've gone ahead and I've actually separated the torso into three individual parts. You've got the front, bottom and, and rear as one part and the two sides as another one. Now this one was technically a failed print because as you can see, there is a big old crack right through the center. So this was something I was just going to throw away anyway, but I thought to myself, you know what? No, I will use it because I'm dedicating this one to Nurgle. Now, um, it does assemble very much like a regular Chaos Knight. You put it together just like a regular Chaos Knight. There's the shoulders. You know, I am going to be magnetizing 
um, a lot of this model because I want to chop and change it out for looks and various other things and whatnot for pictures and, and, and a whole bunch of other things. And I thought to myself, the biggest thing I'm going to be trying to, to print for this model is the top shell, which is going to take 11 hours to print. And one of the close combat weapons, which is going to take like, I think it was like 11 and a half. No, it was seven and a half hours. Well, when I ran the file through UV tools, it had probably close to a thousand islands and resin traps and a whole bunch of other things. Now, this is one of the other things that we don't talk about when it comes to 3D printing. And that is resin traps now what i mean by that is when you 3d print a model you i i, I will grab a model real quick um out of my collection just a, a model randomly um here we go now i like uv tools because it's free but most importantly, it will tell you all the relevant information that you need to know about your printer. That when when this file was was turned into an STL, what you know, what's it aimed at? Voxlab Polaris 5.5. I do know that the Proxima 6.0 is out, and I do plan on getting a Proxima and the Pol and keeping my Polaris. I, I, again, I am a huge fan of Voxlab and what they're they're doing. I, I like the little guy. Um, plus the fact it's only 150 pounds right now on Amazon and so it's my birthday coming up so I'm going to treat myself and grab myself a Voxlab Proxima. It is a, it's like a 4% increase in, in bed size but you know, it is what it is. Now, um, what else? It, it will also tell you, you know, if the file's been modified various other things. See, this is one thing that a lot of people don't seem to understand is you can get one-time use STL files. Now, what that means is... Sorry about the chip and squeaking. What that means is just that. You get to print the file once and then it self-deletes. There's no way to stop it. There's nothing you can do. All you can do is run the STL file in a program very similar to UV tools and see where it says mod is modified. If it says true... It means it will self-destruct after being printed. It's in the G-code. You cannot modify it. Because if you do try to modify the G-code, your print won't work. The file will delete itself and you're out X amount of money. This is something that I think Games Workshop could do. But Games Workshop are too afraid to try. Because they're too afraid that people out there, various hacking groups and whatever. And yes, there are ways that you can modify the file so that it doesn't self-destruct. In fact, it actually copies itself. So the original is destroyed and you've got a copy. Okay? But again, a copy of 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 a copy is still nowhere near as good as the original. So I don't believe in breaking copyright. Okay? Which is why I people have asked me for, for the files for my my um, Chaos Knight. Problem is, it's actually scanned off a real Chaos Knight. Every part you see here was 3D scanned off of a Chaos Knight. So a Chaos Knight was purchased, was assembled, and then 3D scanned. So Games Workshop is not out any money. It's kind of like, uh, it's in a great area like ROMs, ROM hacks. For example, if you've got a ROM of your favorite Super Mario game or whatever, as long as you physically own a copy or a cartridge or a CD of that game, you can digitally make a backup. You can play that backup. That's not against copyright law. What is against copyright law is trying to sell that backup. Is trying to give that backup away. That is illegal. That is why I don't do it. So, anyway, let's get back to the software in hand. Now, I know other people out there will use other tools. There are tons you've got. Let's see. You've got Voxel Print. You've got Pro Slicer. You've got Pro Slicer G Code Viewer. Uh, yes, I do use Cheetubox. I even had, uh, for a while, a Cheetubox Pro account, but I recently cancelled it. I do have a Lychee Pro license, and you're going to see it here in a few seconds once it loads. I, I have a, a Pro license verifying, see, Lychee Slicer Pro. Now, the problem with Lychee Slicer is, for some reason, it 
will not fix my resin issues. I've tried going to their, their add new resin or export or import or whatever the heck you want to call it. And this is all I get. It gives me this, this, and then the rest are just circles of death. It doesn't do a cotton picking thing. And Lychee hasn't exported their list as an actual text file that you can then install and upload. And they haven't done that. And I've tried asking on their Discord group and it just went nowhere. So I, I don't really do anything um, pretty much in Lychee Slicer right now until they get this issue fixed. Um, so it, pretty much I paid a hundred and something pounds for the software and it's just sitting on my desktop doing Jack Diddley Squirt. See? Pro. Mine is the pro variant. See, there's my name. There's my email address. I'm not hiding anything. It's right there. You know? It, it's a paid-for version of the software, but it just does nothing. Um, so, I use UV tools instead. Now, this is the newest version, version 2.290. Um, it is currently using a 300 megs of RAM, which really isn't that much for a software design like this. It's it, it, it Literally, it gives me everything, material used. It will use... 36.48 uh, milliliters of resin and it would cost me a dollar 85 in cents if, if i was paying a dollar a bottle which i'm not the out the print time hours are correct so four hours 22 minutes it will be four hours 22 minutes um it gives me lift speed 65 of 65 retract speed 5 of 5 at 150 so basically that's my stock settings for my printer and uh, yes, you can tweak your settings and you can make your printers print a little bit faster, but Vox Labs do not like that. I have tried tweaking, I've tried testing, I've tried, they like to go slow. They do not like to be rushed. Igloo printers love to go. They love they they they're like the Ferraris. They just they just want to go. Vox Lab Proximans are Volkswagen Beetles. They just do not want to be pushed. Okay, let them let's just just let them do their thing, which is all I care about, and that's all I do. I I I, I more care about. I would get it, rather get a good, clean print and let it take its time rather than rush it and have a bad print. Now, again, I am only using entry-level printers. There are some people on YouTube that use high-grade industrial printers and can print an entire, you know, 13-inch action figure in half an hour. Good luck to them. Way to go. I'm, I'm a small fish in a big pond, and I'm happy being the small fish in a big pond, you know? And when I become the big fish in the small pond, guess what? I ain't getting out that bloody pond. I'd rather be the big fish in the small pond because at the end of the day, I'm having fun. So let me explain what UV Tools does. It quite literally does exactly what it says on the tin. You can scan for issues. So I'll just click this. Let the software run. This machine, this software will can run on Mac, Linux, Windows, um, I've run it on a Debian distro of Linux, I've run it on a Red Hat distro of Linux, and it, it does not have any issues. Um, I run Linux on my laptop. Um, don't ask why, I just do. Now, here it's telling me, it's giving me warnings of potential suction issues. Okay? So it's telling me that there's a chance that in these areas... It's not an island, it, it, it's a, a, a suction issue, okay? Yellow is potential resin traps, and red would be overhangs. Now, it doesn't say that anywhere. I mean, you could go to the help file and read up and learn that way. This is also, you know, you can do a little small quick benchmark. Yes, this is my computer. You know, reference your computer against the developer's system, which is an i9, da 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 and so, like I said, it, it, you can do multi tech Like I said, this 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 software is pretty awesome. And so, like I said, it it gives you warnings about potential suction issues and potential resin traps, and then it gives you warnings of, like I said, it, and it's amazing. Let me let me grab a, a file that I haven't touched in any way, shape, or form. All right, so I'll go through my uh, 3D print software. Let me just grab. Uh, let me just grab something. Can anything? Here you go. Hellbrute. Okay, I'm not. I, I, again, this is a file I found on Thingiverse. 
not a big fan of it but point is you click a little gear cog and it just starts computing the issues and yes if you've got a really fast machine with high resources this machine has 32 gigs of ram it's a amd ryzen 5 9 no ryzen 7 sorry ryzen 7 um stock clocks you know gtx 660 uh, 1660 sorry and i use it for gaming and take a look boom there we've got some potential resin traps only now what it can do is we can then go click on issues sorry uh click on a little um toolbox basically and then repair suction cups repair layers layers and issues let it do its thing and if it can fix it it'll fix it if it can't it can't and the best thing is you can actually save them as individual files so you can keep the original and the modified and print them separately and see which ones work better for you and that's what i've done with my titan now i did it specifically with one of the close combat weapons now the original close combat weapon print I did. See that? There's the resin traps. It's looking for them. Trying to find them. And, okay. So we've got... A possible... Issue with resin traps here. See? It's found them. Now, what you can do is click it again. Show advance synchronize so it synchronizes the layers click repair click yes i love this tool this tool is amazing if you ever get a chance to tip the creator tip the creator it's an amazing tool it has saved me so much headache and resin and you're going to see what i'm talking about this is the sort of software you would expect to see Added to a pro variant of like lychee or, or wherever. Okay, now one more time. Repair suction cups. Show. Do not click synchronize. I, I've not had this software crash on me once. I've had Lychee crash on me multiple times. I've had uh, um, um, freaking, you know, I, I've had uh, um, so many other softwares crash on me. Boom. Fixed. Now all there is is potential. Like I said, it's just saying it is like there. An overhang right there. See? And these you can easily fix. See? Now we can... Go up to... You can even calibrate it for your specific printer and foot speed and print and everything else. Mine's already calibrated for my printer. So, and then you just click save as... And then you just say, see, Chi2 Hellbrute supported copy, save. Now I could print both of those and see which one prints better, cleaner, faster, and easier. But to save you guys having to come back for a second video, what I'm going to do is show you something really, really cool. So, ha ha ha, let's put the video here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you something that I did 3D print using the software. Now bear in mind I haven't cleaned it yet or removed the sprues but that ooh, almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> this is my knight's close combat weapon. I'm going to wash it right now. I've got a little storage tote container full of 
isopropyl alcohol and resin. Yes, I touched it with bare hands. What am I, insane? Resin, if you're allergic to it, fine, fair enough. I'm not, so I'm okay with it. I can touch it. Doesn't burn me. Doesn't do anything to me. My skin's not that sensitive, but we will err on the side of caution. And we will put on our gloves. Okay? Just for all you fuddy-duddy, you know, he's not wearing gloves, he's not wearing a mask, he's not wearing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Now, I was on a tea break, but I also have a nice little scrubby brush. Now, little tough bristly scrubby brush. And what I do is I tend to grab the miniature, the, the, the model in question, just gently get into all the recesses and get all that loose resin out. Now you could afterwards, because yes, I do use water-soluble resin. I use um, right now. I'm using any cubic, but I also use igloo um, water water-soluble resin, which means you can clean it up with just regular water. Now I can only I can only clean up the side that I can see. So this is where I start to take. The supports off now these supports as you can see were ones that i added okay because this was not pre-supported so i've had yeah, and i don't care about the resin getting in there i just let it i, I tend to strain it once every, every other large print so it's a bit crispy because like i said she just came out the printer I haven't managed to cure all, well, I'm washing her now, but I tend to use natural sunlight to cure. I do have a cure box, but it tends to be a pain in the bum. Now, I did overdo the supports, but you know, this is a large print. I thought, I was thinking about the suction pressure and various other issues that could arise because of the size of the miniature. And there we go. Now I didn't use I didn't use UV tools to create the supports. That's one thing UV tool does not do. It does not do supports. Okay? And I'm glad it doesn't. Because you should always try and come up with your own supports. If you fail, you fail. If you succeed, you succeed. Okay, that's how you learn. Okay, think about it. As a kid, you learnt the oven was hot by how? That's right, touching it, getting burnt. Okay, no, I am not condoning going out and touching an oven and getting burnt. What I am condoning is learn to do things your own way. Okay, if you want to, if you want to be lazy and use auto supports, be lazy and use auto supports. It's fine by me. And don't bother checking your phones, that was my messenger that went off. And see, this is why I like this little brush, because it has a little thing on the end that I can use to mangle out supports. See, now, this technically would be considered a failed print, because, like I said, the damaged pixels on my print screen damaged this. But this is perfect for what I want, because, like I said, I'm doing a Nurgle uh, uh night i'm not doing a corn one or a slaneshi one or an imperial one i'm doing a chaos one because i am a chaos player at heart always have been always will be i'm a huge fan of nurgle i've always been a huge fan of the death guard um my favorite is mortarion over typhus i know what even though typhus technically is mortarion's underling they still got beef but anyway model is now washed and what I'm going to do is let the alcohol isopropyl alcohol evaporate I'm going to take these off even though the rubber's already torn on one of them because of the sports but that's fine I'm going to let the iso alcohol, iso alcohol evaporate and this is 
the shoulder joint as you can see and so that's how it I mean this would be a lot thinner but point is it sockets in I am going to magnetize it so I'm going to put a magnet in here magnet in there magnet in here magnet in there and so I can magnetize the arm as much as I want and I'm going to give you again we're, we're, we're I'll give you a simple scale reference um, this is a 28 millimeter flames of war soldier so it's the same scale okay here is a you know what I've got one here's a Primaris space marine it fits in his hand so it is in scale and once I've got the rest of the parts 3d printed this little guy is gonna look amazing and I cannot wait um, I'm gonna add some fly wings to him um, I do have some already printed again these are from dark gods these wings I'm gonna 3d print the wings they're just going to be symbolic. They're not going to actually be functional or anything. But I'm going to 3D print the wings as well. And so, yeah. This is going to be my 40k Chaos Knight dedicated to Nurgle. Um, I was going to do one dedicated to the Night Lords. Um, because I was going to swap out the uh, head with the um, Drake head. The Chaos Flying Iron Drake head. And put it there and do like a night lords conversion thing and so we can do that there and we can put this here so all, all i've really got to print off now is the other arm the armor plates and pick up a base on games workshop's website glue it to the base and yeah clean up the model a little bit more the resin a little bit more and there we go so yeah that's what i'm doing guys i'm actually 3d printing my own chaos uh chaos knight for uh, my death guard army for mortarion um who's actually ironically here this is this this should give you a scale reference that's uh, Mortarion, the Demon Primarch. That's his power claw. That should give you a scale reference. But anyway, guys. Um. So yeah. What the only thing I can I can really say that 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 did it that helped me out is UV tools. Because I've tried 3D printing that claw before, multiple times, and failed. I've gone through three FEP sheets, because every time I've failed, it's actually damaged the FEP sheets. Um, and yet, I thought to myself, let's give this software a try. Run it through, found the issues, fixed the issues, and it said, yeah, it's ready to print. I'm like, what's the chances of it printing? It said 90-something percent. I was like, huh? Better than a kick in the teeth. Ran it through the printer, went to bed, woke up this morning, and saw that beautiful claw. I was expecting to see a great big grey lump mess. And saw that beautiful claw, and a big old grin hit my face, and I thought to myself, I have to do this video. I have to make this video. And so, I have to give all the props in the world to UV Tools for helping me make and have better, safer prints. Um, I've managed to print now, I think it's like maybe 25, 30 Renegade Guardsmen. I do plan on print, printing a whole bunch more. I'm in talks with the original artist to see if he's willing to, um, allow me, well, well to, to send me a, just a weapons set. Because all the weapons that come with the, we with, with the soldiers are all 
mix they're set for specific bodies for example uh, one body one arm a one arm b um, i like to mix and match it up and so i've asked him if he can come up with some just some generic weapons that i can just cut and swap out for like rocket launchers plasma grenades you know things of that nature but yeah um once i start throwing some paint on these renegade guys i'll be doing a paint stream uh, over on twitch as well as youtube at the same time yes i will be simulcasting and uh, so you guys can all watch out and um, have fun and ask questions so until then guys uh, i always end my videos with a keep your shells fine keep your enemies dying cover commander is out but in this case i'm going to end it with um yeah give uv tools a try if you're into 3d printing